Hi, I'm Brian Rogers, Jr., commercial photographer and digital artist. As you can imagine, as a product photographer and retoucher, I spend a lot of time in Photoshop. And when you spend as much time in Photoshop as I do, you want to work as efficiently and fast as you possibly can. And knowing a lot of keyboard shortcuts is crucial in making that happen. So we're going to jump into Photoshop, and I'm going to show you some keyboard shortcuts that are going to save you a ton of time. Just so you guys know, I am a Mac user using a PC today. So when I say Control, that will be Command on a Mac. And if I say Alt, that will be Option on a Mac. So here's our first image. This is an image I created a while back. It's already done. First thing you're going to want to do in Photoshop is you're going to want to be able to move around quickly. So I'm going to share some quick little tips to start moving around. First one you want to know about is the Zoom tool. So to get the Zoom tool, hit the letter Z and you're going to notice you've got a little plus icon, and all you're going to do is click. And as you click, you'll get closer to the image. If you want to back out, you can hit the Alt key. You'll see that it turns into a minus. Click again, and you'll be able to zoom out. If you want to zoom out all the way and have your document just fill the frame so you can see the entire thing, hit Control-0, and that will bring you out. So we're going to zoom back into the image, and if you want to move back and forth, up and down, side to side, hold the space bar, it's going to turn into the hand tool and then just click and drag and you'll be able to drag around your image and see it with a lot more detail. Now again to back out control zero. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate our image. In order to do that make sure that you hit the letter R for rotate. Now this layer is locked so we're not going to be able to do anything yet so if you double click that layer click OK you'll be able to unlock that layer. Now. If you click and drag, you'll be able to rotate your canvas. And this is really helpful if you have some areas that are a little hard to clone and you want to um, zoom in and fix. If you hold the shift key and look in the upper right hand corner here, you'll notice that we're turning in 15 degree increments. That will help you keep your document a little straighter when you go to put it back. If you don't hold shift, you'll get more minute changes. So if you need to do that, that's a great way to do it. But most of the time, I just hold shift and rotate. From time to time, you may want to add guides in your image. And in order to do that, you need to open your rulers tab. Now, I already have it open, but if you don't, all you do is hit control R, and you'll see that it toggles on the rulers. And then from there, you can just drag a guide. So if you've got a lot of vertical or straight lines or anything like that, you can just drag those out. And to bring guides down from the top, just click and drag. And it's that easy. Now if you want to hide the guides, just hit Control H for hide, and you'll get rid of them. Now they're still there, they're just hidden right now. So if you want to see them again, just hit Control H again, and they'll bring it right back up. Another tool that I really like to use is the brush tool. And in order to show you that, I'm going to jump into another image. Okay, so to access the brush tool, just hit the letter B. Now we've got our brush selected. One thing that I like to do is I like to sample colors and brush from there. So I've already created a new layer. If you want to sample a color, just hit the Alt key and you want to hold it down. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn into the eyedropper tool temporarily. And you can just click and sample colors. And you'll notice that the color changes right down here in the color panel. Now as soon as I let off the Alt key, it'll go back to the regular brush. So you can then start painting with that color. To undo that, I'm going to hit Command Z. If you want to permanently switch to your eyedropper tool, just hit the letter I. And then if you want to switch back to the brush tool, hit B. Now if you want to make your brush size bigger or smaller, just use the left or right bracket keys on your keyboard. So to make it smaller, hit the left bracket. To make it bigger, hit the right bracket. If you want to fine tune the brush settings, simply right click and then you'll see hardness and you'll see all of your brush presets below. And if you want to exit that menu, simply press enter. So another way to change the brush size and hardness, on a PC, if you hold the Alt key and right click, if you drag left or right, that will make the brush smaller or larger. And if you go up or down, it will actually change the hardness of the brush. Now if you're on a Mac, you're going to want to hold Option and Command at the same time and do the left and right and the up and down. It'll do the same thing. Now going back to the eyedropper tool, you'll notice that we have the color blue selected. If you want to toggle between your foreground and background color, you can hit, simply hit the letter X, and that will toggle between the two. 
the one that's in front is the one that's selected. So if I wanted to paint with white, hit the letter B for brush, and then you'll see that I'm painting with white. If I want to paint with blue, hit X, and then it'll toggle the color. Now if I want to go back to the default colors, which are black and white, simply hit the letter D. Now obviously I'm showing you an example, and this looks terrible, so let's undo this. In order to do that, I'm going to hit Control Z, and what that's going to do is it's going to take away the last change that I just made. And this is actually a nice little tip for a before and after. So if you want to see a difference between what you just did and what it looks like now, if you continue to hit Control Z, you'll toggle that on and off. Now if I want to completely get rid of this and back up even more steps, I'm going to hold Control, Alt, and Z to do that. So let's go back to the regular version here. I'm going to hit Control, Alt, Z once to get rid of the blue, and I'm going to hit twice to get rid of that white. You can actually cycle through your entire history panel if you continue to hit Control alt z So let me jump into the next set of tools that I use most frequently. So some of the selection tools that I use most frequently are the Quick Selection tool, the Marquee tool, and the Lasso tool. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to just zoom into this image real quick, and I'm going to hit the letter W, and that's going to bring up the Magic Wand tool. So you can see that as we click, it's going to select certain parts of that image. Now, if I add shift to that, it will add additional selections. If I want to take one away, I can hold the Alt key and click on that selection, and it will completely get rid of that selection. The marquee tool is the letter M. So if I hit the letter M, you'll see that by default, we've got this rectangular marquee. I can just drag that out and make a selection. Now, to deselect a selection, simply hit Control D for deselect. The next one we're going to cover is the lasso tool. If you hit the letter L, it'll bring up the lasso tool, and then you can simply just drag around and make a freeform selection. Again, to deselect, I'm going to hit Control D. Now, it's important to note that there are multiple tool subsets. So, for example, if I go to the lasso tool here and I hold down and click on it, you'll notice that there are multiple tools in this little panel. And there's a quick little way to cycle through those. In order to do that, I'm just going to add the shift key to the letter for that keyboard shortcut. So for example, lasso is L. If I add shift to that and I hit L, it's going to cycle through all of the lasso tools we have available to us. In order to switch the marquee tool, we're going to hit the letter M and we're going to add shift to it. So shift M and that's going to cycle through the various marquee tools that we have available to us. And this works with all of the tools that have multiple tool subsets in that panel. So the next selection tool we're going to talk about is the pen tool. If you hit the letter P, that's going to bring up the pen tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a selection by making some anchor points. So I'm just going to click in a few spots. And then to close this, I'm going to click on the very last point here. And now we've got a pen path made. And what we want to do in order to make a selection is we're going to hit Control Enter. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually make that selection. Now again to deselect, Control D. I'm going to use the pen tool again and we're going to cover a curve. So to create a curve with the pen tool, I'm just going to click and drag. I need to first create an anchor point, so I'm just going to click. And then the next one I'm going to click and drag. We're just going to make a quick little path around this round shape. Now, if I click and drag on the next one, Photoshop kind of does its own thing. And if you want to have more control, I'm just going to undo that. So Control Z. You want to click on that last anchor point and hold the Alt key. And when you do that, and then you click and drag on the next one, you'll have more control as to where that path is going to go. So I'm going to just quickly finish this one up. And then again, to make that an actual selection, I'm going to hit Control Enter. We've got our selection, and to deselect, Control D. Now the next set of tools that I use, I use for retouching. So I'm going to open up another image, and we're going to go through those. Okay, so the first retouching tool we're going to talk about is the healing brush. In order to get to that, we're going to hit the letter J. That's going to bring up the healing brush. And again, there are multiple options inside of this panel. The two that I use the most are Spot Healing Brush and the Healing Brush Tool. The first one, Spot Healing Brush Tool, make sure Content Aware is selected. And basically, I can just go through here and let Adobe do its math in the background to intelligently remove some of these things. Now, the next one I'm going to jump into, and I'm going to hit Shift and J, and that's going to go to the regular healing brush. 
And what that lets me do is it allows me to manually sample certain areas so I can brush those out. I'm going to hit the Alt key and I'm going to sample from an area and then I'm just going to simply brush over that. The next one I like to use is the clone stamp tool. To get to that, I'm just going to hit the letter S. And again, just like the healing brush tool, you can hold the Alt or Option key and you can select a certain area and then just simply brush. Another commonly used tool is the gradient tool. In order to get to that, we're just going to press the letter G. It's going to switch over to gradient. You can sample a color by hitting the letter I. So we'll just sample this black, for example. I'm going to go back to G so we can uh, have the gradient tool selected. And we're just going to click and drag. Now, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. If I want to make a straighter gradient, if I add the shift key to that, we'll get a straight line. So that's really helpful to know as well. Under the gradient tool is the paint bucket tool. In order to get to that, I'm going to add shift and I'm going to hit G. And that's going to give me the paint bucket. So what I'm going to do now is we've got black selected as our foreground, and if I simply click, it's going to paint that entire layer black. Okay, so let's say we want to crop this image. To do that, I'm just going to hit the letter C. And then I'm going to click and drag on these edges. And it's kind of doing its own thing, so if I want to constrain the proportions, I just add the, the shift key to that, and then we can proportionally crop that image. And hit enter to go ahead and commit. One little side note, there's a little checkbox up here. If it says delete cropped pixels and it's checked, that means that you are doing destructive uh, cropping, so you don't want to do that. So we're going to hit control Z, make sure that that is unchecked. Now when we hit the letter C for crop tool, we can now crop, hit enter, and if we decide that we don't like that crop, we can always go back. So if we hit the letter C again and just click on the image, you can see that we have the rest of that image still intact. So we can go back and readjust our crop. Now another thing you might want to do is you might want to scale your image up or down. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is hit Control T for free transform, and it's going to bring up this little box. And if we want to scale it down, I'm going to hold the Shift key so it does it proportionally and I'm just going to click and drag. And you'll notice that it made it smaller. Now if I want to make it larger, I can also hold the shift key and drag back up to make it larger. Now you'll notice it's dragging it from that particular point. So if I go here to the middle and drag up or down, it's kind of, it's not looking very good. Now if you want to scale from the center of the image, you can hold shift and add alt to it. And what it's going to do is it's going to scale proportionally from that center point. If you ever forget any of these keyboard shortcuts, you can simply go over to the tools panel and hover over that tool and it'll tell you the keyboard shortcut. All right guys, I know we've covered a lot of keyboard shortcuts in this video, but I know that's gonna save you a ton of time when you're working on images in Photoshop. If you guys wanna learn more about product photography and Photoshop techniques, head over to my profile on fstoppers.com and be sure to follow me. Also, be sure to click the link below to sign up for a newsletter that will give you information about future video tutorials that we make. Thank you guys so much for watching.